What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we're gonna do something a little different. We're checking out the Donner Arena 2000 amp modeler and effects processor. Let's do it. All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle and I typically take all sorts of awesome high gain amps and cabs and record them with an SM57 and give you the unprocessed audio. But today we're tackling something completely different. We're checking out a brand new amp modeler and effects processor from Donner. Now let me start this whole video off with saying I don't have a whole lot of experience with amp modeler. I own a Kemper, I own a Quad Cortex, and I use those for the amp capturing functionality exclusively. I don't really use them for anything else. But Donner reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to check this thing out here on the channel with you guys, and I figured, you know what? It's about time that I kind of jumped in and kind of got familiar with this stuff. So I said, let's go ahead and do it. But even though Donner sent me this unit in order to make a video for you guys, you're still gonna get all of my honest thoughts and opinions as always. So please keep that in mind. So you guys heard that intro track and uh, that was all the Arena 2000. I personally thought that those tones were pretty impressive, especially in the mix. I definitely got some sounds that I was happy with and those amps that I used in that intro track are all amps that I am very familiar with and I thought that they got pretty close to the real deal, which I find impressive because this unit comes in at $269. This thing is incredibly affordable and I just overall found those tones impressive. Now, I did have to do some things within the modeler in order to get them a little bit closer to the real thing and a little bit closer to my taste, but I'm gonna kind of dive in and show you what I did here. Now, if you're interested in all the functionality of this unit, there are a bunch of videos that go over that stuff. I am not really going to kind of break down every single function that comes within this thing. I am more concerned about the amp modeling and the tones that lie within because that's what I'm going to guess that you guys uh, viewing my channel are going to be more concerned with as well. A quick breakdown of the features off the top of my head included in this modeler though, you have a whole bunch of different amps, a whole bunch of different cabs. Each cab has its own miking section, which I actually find really interesting and really cool about this thing. Again, I'm not super familiar with other modelers and they may all include this as well, but I found that kind of impressive at the price point. You also have three physical switches in order to activate or deactivate whatever effects that you have built into your signal chain on any given preset. You also have an expansion available, so if you wanna connect an extra couple of switches to give you more switching functionality. If you're using this live, you can do so. So if you wanna connect a different pedal to use the wah or to use a volume pedal or something else like that and designate the onboard expression pedal for something else, you can do that. This pedal also has the ability to do stereo out via XLR or stereo out via the quarter inch jacks. You can also send it out via both because there are output and XLR individual level controls. Hey guys, quick interruption while editing this video. I forgot to mention that you actually do have the ability to bypass the cabinet sim or the impulse response on either of those outputs. So if you wanna to go to front of house with your XLR, but go into an external power amp with the quarter inch jacks, you can actually go in here and you can defeat the impulse response on either of those outputs. So if you wanna use this thing live, you can absolutely do that while going to both front of house and into your power amp return. I think that's actually pretty cool. Back to the video. 
And last but not least, there is a headphone jack on this thing, so you can just plug right into this and play and have your whole rig right there. So I actually already personally got use out of that because when I went to Sweetwater last week, I took this thing with me, packed it in my bag, and uh, pulled it out and played guitar and messed around with it every night. So that was a nice little feature to have as well. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the tones because again, that's why you guys are here. So on the modeler, I have gone ahead and I have set up four different presets. Now, they're all basically set up generally the same in that I have them set as the amp with an overdrive pedal, a gate in front, a gate behind them. And then on three of the four settings, I have a post 10 band EQ or a post amp 10 band EQ in order to shape the EQ of the amp a little bit more to get it uh, a little bit more accurate or a little bit more to my taste. But that's all that I really have going on. And right now we're going directly into my uh, audio interface and we are using the Get Good Drums Cali Oversize plug-in. The reason that we are doing this is I wanted to show these uh, amp models to you on a, a cab or an impulse response that I am really familiar with. That way I can kind of judge them a little bit more accurately. And then we will jump in and check them out onto some of the built-in impulse responses that are included in here because there are a couple of them that are really cool. So we'll check those out as well. But I'm going to stop talking. We are on the Angle Savage setting that I have set up here. This is channel four of the Angle Savage. And here's the tone that I have. <laughs> Should also mention, I'm getting ahead of myself, I am using my LTD EC1000. This has the Alnico 2 Pro pickups in it, uh, which actually sounds surprisingly incredible for the chuggy stuff. But yeah, that, <laughs> that amp sim, in my opinion, sounds really, really good. So if we go in here, all of these controls here are touch. So if you wanna go in and edit something like say the amp itself, you just press the amp and then you have all of your analog controls here in order to control uh, the EQ and control them. And I'm gonna say control a few more times. How's that sound? So anyways, over here, we've got gain, bass, middle, treble, volume. Now, one thing is, if you're used to certain controls on certain amps, you're going to get the same controls no matter what amp model that you have on here. That is just, you know, probably the limitations of the software and hardware that they're using here, but they give you the, the standard parameters in order to change your tone. And it seems to be generally enough to get it in the ballpark and then we'll get the 10 band EQ involved if I really feel like it needs something a little bit different. But yeah, that is our amp controls. And then over here in front, you have an additional effects uh, uh, block, I guess. Yeah, a block. We'll call it a block. It's a block. And I have that set to an intelligent gate, but you can throw all sorts of different effects out in front. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm not super uh, familiar with effects in general, and I'm really not familiar with running effects in front of my amp that aren't in overdrive. So that's just a taste of what you're gonna get inside of this thing. But again, I'm gonna leave the effects portion of this to other people who are gonna be able to demo them far better than I am. You also have a compression block here, and they give you all sorts of different compressors to choose from, but we're gonna go ahead and essentially turn that off. If the block here on the front is not lit, that means that it is not in the signal. You can hit the back button over here. It takes you to the home page, and you can see here it is still not in the signal. So yeah, for drive, we have all sorts of different overdrives to choose from. I have my uh, Tube 9, which is a TS9 style tube screamer, but there are all sorts of different overdrives. You've got the 808, you've got the Tube 9 uh, clones, which is obviously gonna be a Klon style. We've got a Rat, we've got an OCD, and then we start getting into fuzzes and uh, basically almost like distortion pedal type drives um, all the way up into an HM2. There's an HM2 on here. <laughs> Thank you.
But yeah, all sorts of, I believe there's 20, yes, 20 different drives. Now, one thing I've noticed with the overdrives on here, you cannot set them like you would set an overdrive in front of your amp in the real world because uh, it just doesn't add any saturation if you do it that way. You basically have to uh, boost the level up like you would in front of an amp, but this gain has to at least be on roughly around 10 in order to add any real saturation. <laughs> So there's 10, here it is with the drive off. And then again, turn it on. Because if you turn this gain all the way down, it actually doesn't really seem to add any saturation or output. So I think I had it somewhere around 25. And it doesn't add any weird clipping or anything else. Uh, it works really well. You just have to turn the gain up on the pedal if you want some more saturation out of it. After the amp, on the Savage, I don't currently have anything. So let's go back and let's go to a preset that I've set up that actually does have a post EQ. So my, my 5150 Blue. <laughs> So anyways, yeah, we are on the 5153 Blue, which again, I think sounds really good. I did have to add this post EQ in to get it a little bit more accurate though. So what did I do? I went in here, I took out a little bit of 500 Hertz. That's just a personal taste thing. That wasn't to get it more accurate to the amp. When we go over to this side, I basically had to add some mids and highs across the board because without the EQ, the amp sounded a little subdued in those frequencies. If I take the EQ off, here's what we have. <laughs> Again, not terrible. It sounds pretty good. Add the EQ. And that's just to get it a little bit more to my liking. Again, I tend to like brighter tones. And uh, what am I doing here? Going back to the amp. So yeah, it's the EVH Blue Channel. So if we go into the actual amp EQ, I'm gonna turn this EQ pedal off just to show you. The EQ does have a pretty significant effect, but it seems that the the uh, bands of which, or the Q of the EQ on the controls in each individual amp are very set. They don't really seem to adjust a wide frequency. They only seem to adjust a small little frequency. <laughs> but they are usable in those frequencies in which they are essentially modeled to affect. That's removing a bunch of the bass. Let's go ahead and add a bunch more in. Again, that's where that 10 band EQ really comes in after the fact, but it's not like you only get a 10 band. You can actually come in here and you can cycle through a whole bunch. You can uh, set up the exact frequencies that you want with this custom EQ uh, to adjust and it'll give you the option to, to change those frequencies and change the amount of boost or cut. I'm not really familiar with any three band EQs off the top of my head, but if you wanted something like that, there you go. Over here, we have a five band EQ. Now this is cool because this is actually the same frequencies that the Mesa five band EQ effects on all the Mark series amps. So if you go into a Mark setting on here, you can throw this EQ on after your Mark amp and have the Mesa five band EQ smile set up and it'll actually sound much more like a Mark amp. So I thought that that was really cool. And then you have a six band EQ set up much like an MXR six band EQ back into the 10, which is what I was using. So again, a whole lot of options there to really shape your tone uh, after the amp. And I do think that this comes into handy big time comes into handy isn't really a, a sentence or a statement or anything. You guys understand what I'm trying to say. All right, so back here, we are back. Let's go into the JCM 800. So the JCM 800, I actually found to probably be my favorite model on here. <laughs> We also have that 10 band EQ on, and I'm kind of boosting some upper mids and some highs because again, the modeling, it does sound like a JCM 800, but it almost sounds like the modeling was captured with the mids on the 800 turned pretty low, probably below noon. So it's a little bit more of that low mid grunt. I'm gonna turn this EQ off, back to the amp. <laughs> 
So as you can tell, it's got a little bit more of that low mid focus. We turn the EQ on, it gets brighter again. <laughs> Just for fun over here, I'm going to the delay. We're gonna turn the delay and reverb on. That is fun, that is fun. So I'm turning that off because I don't know what I'm doing with these, but again, it definitely has that 800 type sound and feel. But we go back into this drive, we can actually add even more gain from this drive if we wanna gain this 800 out a little bit back over to the amp. <laughs> It sounds good to me, guys. I like the way that this sounds. One area where I feel it's lacking just a little bit, or not lacking, it's just, it's, it's gonna be really hard to get this right for any model or any price point, so keep that in mind. The feel on everything, the feel is very tight on every amp, and I think that that's just a limitation of the hardware. Now, it doesn't feel bad, it makes everything easy to play, but even on something like my Neural Quad Cortex, sometimes the feel isn't right on the amps. So again, keep that in mind, these aren't. All right, so last thing I wanna do, I wanna go in here, I wanna turn my uh, cab impulse response off. Let's go into the cab section. So I have not really done too much here. Here's a Marshall 1960A. Over here, it gives you all sorts of different microphones to choose from. <laughs> All right, so there is our built-in cabinet. So with an SM57, yeah, it's gonna probably sound a little bit on the harsh side. Now that is a Marshall 1936 too. Who knows what's in that? Whatever they have going on with the 1960A. <laughs> that sounds great to me. Let's go over, let's see, okay, C414. Uh, U87, that's interesting, a U47, AT3535. These impulse responses are actually good. That's good, that is really good. All right, so uh, U47. A little rounder, a little warmer. Uh, let's go to something I'm a little bit more familiar with, MD421. That's got the mids, that's got the kind of graininess of a 421. Okay, so here we have a Mexa, which I believe is gonna be a Mesa cab. Much more mid forward, let's go to our amp, let's turn that mid down quite a bit and our highs down a little bit. And so what else do we have? We've got a Mesa Standard. Uh, here's that Friedman again. Oh, we don't have a cab. Sorry about your ears, guys. Let's get that cab on. Let's go to something with, say, a Friedman 412. Here we go. We didn't even look at all the amp models. There's tons of amp models in here. So Friedman, you've got an SLO. Here's that Angle Savage, a Dumble. We've got some Sewer stuff, uh, Crown, I'm not sure, Matchless. Morgan, divided by 13, Mr. Z. I mean, there's all sorts of boutique amp models in here. High Watts, uh, an H and, uh, Hughes and Kettner Triamp. We got a PRS Archon. I mean, guys, there's, there's, look at this. We're up in the, okay, so 80 amp models in here. There was a ton of different cabs as well, ranging from 112s all the way to uh, 412s. So overall, I, I really am impressed with this, guys. I want you to know that is my honest opinion. 
I am impressed with how this thing sounds. I think it sounds good. I think the functionality is good. Everything, once I kind of figured out where everything was, it became easy for me to navigate. It became easy for me to create presets. And honestly, those are reasons that I've kind of always stayed away from modelers. Uh, they were a little bit cumbersome. This is incredibly easy to dial in. My patch is the way I want it. The impulse responses on here, I thought sounded really good. Limited functionality as far as that stuff goes, but the functions that are built in here, I think are very usable. I think the sounds are very good. I think it has a nice clean layout. You also get Bluetooth functionality in order to control everything from your phone via a Bluetooth connection if you wanted to do that. I had a lot of fun messing around with this thing. Uh, I'm really curious to hear from you guys. What do you think? Do you think that the tones sound as good as I think that they do sitting here in front of my monitors? I found them to be very impressive overall. But again, I'm curious to see how you guys feel about them. And again, this unit is $269, but it just so happens to be Donner's Black Friday event. So Donner is having a sale on pretty much everything on Amazon. So if you go into Amazon, you wanna buy this, they're gonna give you a $20 off coupon right now. There is no affiliate link for me. I don't get paid anything if you guys buy this thing or don't buy it. So they just wanted to let me know that they're giving you a $20 coupon on Amazon if you wanna jump in and check this thing out. So yeah, that's gonna do it for me today, guys. If you do wanna support my channel, down in the description are all of my typical affiliate links, including Sweetwater, Zounds, and a few other things. Anything you click on down there greatly helps the channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button. We may do more of these modelers in the future if you guys wanna see them. So you guys just have to let me know. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another ant. There we go.